You either use the internet for fun or you use the internet to grow. You're here to grow. Welcome to TRS Clips. Uh, the one thing I know about media after being a part of it is that it's very easy to create narratives. I've had so many narratives created about me, which are not true, but I've understood the ease with which a narrative can be created, which is why I think with podcasts, you have the opportunity to undo like certain narratives. Uh, I want to know what it was like working in the Man Manmohan Singh government and what was he like? Like we've had lots of people say lots of things about him, even on the show, but uh, you've had like a very long political career and you're young. So I, I feel you'll be able to say it with a lot more relatability. Uh, the kind of criticism he gets now, the way it's, people look back at him, everyone respects his role in opening up the Indian economy. And then suddenly with his PM stint, everyone's like, no, he was too quiet. Why didn't he speak? There's criticism towards Sonia Gandhi, etc. What was it like from your eyes? You were there. Yeah. So firstly, I, you know, I've had the good fortune of knowing Dr. Manmohan Singh um, from a very early stage in my life. He was a very, very close friend of my father's. He would come to Mumbai till 2003 December four months before he became prime minister, he would stay at our place in Mumbai. And um, very, very close personal ties, a great mentor, a great human being, a thorough intellectual. As an MP, my first observation of him as a member of parliament, and I, I say this, you know, because I was 27 years old. I just got into parliament. Um, parliament, there's a premium on age. Let me put it this mm. way. There's, there are people are 27 is, is very, very young. Uh, it's bringing the average age down significantly. My first fear was how do I get through to say what I want to say to initiate the debate on right to information, to be permitted to speak for 20 minutes, to give a speech for 20 minutes to the entire parliament, to stalwarts. Atal Bihari Vajpayee was a member, Alke Advani was a member, Dr. Manmohan Singh, Mrs. Sonia Gandhi. Manmohan, Dr. Manmohan Singh was extremely encouraging. And my first observation of him as a member of parliament, which was very different from knowing him at a personal level before, was that he had no insecurity about him. He wanted people to speak. He wanted to consult younger people to seek their opinions. When I became a minister, and I became a minister for IT and uh, telecommunications and IT, and I do recall at that time his media advisor, and we were having a conversation about getting him on social media. Um, once we were having a conversation about the e-governance, there was a review meeting on the e-governance issue. He knew his strengths. He knew his weaknesses. He didn't boast about his... He didn't try to hide his weaknesses and show them as strengths. He would say very plainly in a meeting, this is something I don't understand very well, or I'm a little confused about, and seek your opinion on it. And sometimes even delegate and say, if you know it better, Milin, and your ministry secretary knows it better, please take a call. I trust your instinct on this. So then if I look at you know the, the, the nuclear deal, which was a significant moment in India's history, which ended India's civilian nuclear isolation. Um, he led from the front. Um, he, when, when the, when the, it, it's, it, it's a little technical, but when he started to, when India in 2005, during his visit to the White House, when George Bush was the president, that started a series of events where India's nuclear isolation, which allowed India to essentially roll out its civilian nuclear capabilities to build nuclear energy. By the way, in a country like France, I think 70% of their energy doesn't come from solar or wind or fossil fuels. It comes from nuclear. And India wasn't able to do that. And Dr. Manmohan Singh ended that isolation. And today we're seeing nuclear plants being inaugurated as we speak. There's one in Gujarat right now. Um, he led that from the front. And a lot of us in politics and in the party, this was just towards the maybe a year before the elections, around the same time as now. Um, and we were concerned. We were like, why are you, why is he pushing this thing through? It's controversial. At that time, mind you, even the BJP was opposed to it. So he's somebody who I've noticed and I've seen about him. 
in you know unfortunately what happens is politics has become so much about communication so much about media so much about Perceptions. the physical pre- presentation how do you look how do you communicate um how often do you communicate how good is your oratory skills that's the nature of politics and i don't say that that's a bad thing it's a requirement today in politics but when we place a greater premium on issues like that we tend to take away from real substance and real gravitas because there is a a category of politicians in india or around the world for whom polit- communication may be their weak point but having the ability to analyze decipher a problem is something they know well now for example when the lockdowns happened um he predicted for instance what will be the hit on our gdp he says there'll be a 2% loss and sure enough one year later that was the exact figure now that's not that's not an easy thing to to do in a country as vast as ours with so many parameters that go into determining how the economy will look one year from now so that takes gravitas that takes skill you know the reason i want to highlight this whole dr manmohan singh angle is i one of my favorite basketball players is lebron james and one of his favorite quotes is it's uh, about damn time that someone puts respect against my name i do have respect for dr manmohan singh and what he did especially when you talk about the early 90s uh, there's a legacy there's a serious part of the indian legacy that no, belongs to i would say you his. know to be honest uh, not just in the 90s there's no question about it but even in the upa years for instance yeah. lifting 300 million people out of poverty yeah. um uh, for example if today any of us travel on indigo spice jet uh, people who could otherwise never think of flying that's a reform that he initiated during his time in upa uh, if you look at the state of say mumbai airport and what it was prior to its the public private partnership that's a reform that he initiated if you think of uh, the telecommunications the power that we have in our pockets uh, the advent of 4g that was an initiative during his tenure as prime minister you know the political commentators the input they give is they always praise him and then they say okay the last phase and all those corruption scandals just kind of tarnished the look to be honest bit. with you you know uh, th- these are these are pol- this is politics because if you get into it uh, 2g was a huge scandal as per the cag but yet the court acquitted all those accused so who's to what what does a scandal yeah. mean yeah and and this is and, the truth of figured about talking to the world of politics right now the, if you ask me i was a telecommunications minister i've yeah. seen those files which were in question which were the controversial files where there was an allegation of corruption now there was a choice before the government do you want to increase tele density or do you want to make money for the government i'll give you an example if you make money from a telecom operator make lot of money take lot of money from them great and you're saying i saved i gained money for the exchequer who's lending those people those money that money banks mm. if those people can't pay the banks back the banks collapse who's the bank who are the shareholders of the bank in many cases could be the public the public of india who are depositors of the bank in the bank the public so it's like i've ta- i've taken money from one pocket but it's it's like there's a hole versus if you look at a policy where you don't auction spectrum and you say i want tele density to improve because i want that telecom operator to pass that cost advantage to the cu- customer and that's one of the reasons why we have one of the cheapest tariffs in the world it's not everywhere in the country that people can enjoy 4g 5g services at such cheap rates so a lot of these things are political uh, these have gone through the judiciary ultimately you have to trust the judiciary the judiciary has opined on them has passed a verdict on them has acquitted people who were accused so that means that the scam cannot be proved or someone's not convicted there was no scam that existed so these were things frankly ranveer where i'm willing to say that in the last 3 years of upa there was a leap frog in terms of communication technologies in terms of how politicians communicated i'm willing to concede that point that gone were the days where you had to communicate through a newspaper interview through a television interview suddenly you had social media and that changed things very quickly 
and i would agree that we were late as a government to embracing that technology and that is a reason why certain things were thrown at us and certain things may have stuck at on us mm. but that doesn't take away from the fact that a man like dr manmohan singh had tremendous integrity um tremendous foresight um tremendous courage to see things through to risk political capital to ensure that the nuclear agreement was passed and was somebody who as i said was extremely encouraging uh, was someone who gave people like me a free hand um, and somebody who you know frankly i could we could spend hours debating policies which is not easy to do to debate with an intellectual uh, you know what should our it policy be what should our policy be with internet ott players what should our policy be with apps you know this is what i actually dislike about people on either end of a political spectrum which is that they're not willing to listen to the other side they're not willing to understand that everything is gray and you got to highlight like positives and negatives yeah i think that's that's the nature of how things are stacked up you know people think this leader is good means everything he does is good and he can do no bad or this leader is bad and everything they do is bad and they yeah. can do no good have you had conversations with dr manmohan singh post his tenure about how he looks back at his tenure you know i met him last um a few months ago i can't remember the date i tweeted about it when i met him last and um of course he was physically a little weaker and um there was an image of his recently in parliament as well but he was uh, mentally extremely sharp um he was very very aware of what's happening not just in india economically and politically but extremely articulate about what he sees frankly happening in india's neighborhood we had a pretty long chat about what's happening in south asia uh with our neighbors sri lanka maldives pakistan uh what is happening with china um and um and i think i i you know i don't i, I wouldn't ask him about the past because i i know his record and i think that he's he's very comfortable about what he did in the past and he's made that famous statement right history will be kinder when they judge him and i think that he will be seen in a very different light because to be honest you know when he did the economic reforms in 91 for a long time there was a perception that he did something terrible to the indian economy really of course i did i did 91 know. was not something which was extremely well received the opposition at the time the bjp at the time were very against economic reforms this is I've there was, a, there, was there were famous sayings like you know we want when when we were reforming that we want potato chips not microchips and there were all those kinds of things nobody wanted the economy to open um it it was i think during vajpayee's era in 2000 in in 99 2000 when there was a clear agreement that we have to go into economic reforms and where it transcended parties but in 91 to 96 when narsimha rao was a prime minister the opposition at the time including the bjp was opposed to it but today when we look back we say thank god we reformed best thing that and uh, generations people who were born after 91 have only seen a reformed india um i'm getting goosebumps as you say that man yeah because the older i get and the more i get to know people like yourself the more i realize that all this these cameras these mics no i mean you know i'll tell you um you, your generation has never seen you've never had to go to a politician to ask them for a telephone connection <laughs> imagine that was the way things worked at the time i'll tell you in a small way they talk about microphones i was you know i play the guitar and um for me i, I was a I, i am a good guitar player and i was uh, very very into it when i was young and one of the reasons i gave up playing the guitar was because when i was 13 14 15 when you're just getting into it um to source things that you need for the guitar like a good quality string cables um straps to hold up the guitar uh what they call effects processors pedals you couldn't get those things and um today any music studio any young person in a small town also you see them having access to those technologies having access to those instruments having access so these are all a product and a result of economic reforms yeah 
breaks my heart a little bit about what he said what dr manmohan singh said um where he hopes that history will be kind of dedicated his whole life you know to our country he's done these incredible things and he's remembered for the last pr campaign that we have gone against look i think i personally have extremely high regards for for dr manmohan singh i also have and i think people will settle down and realize in time uh when things settle this is this is political dust it settles mm. and when it settles people will realize what were manmohan singh's contributions to the country to the economy uh people will realize just like i realize what were vajpayee ji's contributions to the economy what were vajpayee ji's contributions to nation building so every prime minister and i'll tell you even prime ministers who had who were in power for a short while they were prime ministers again well before your time vp singh chandrashekhar um ik gujral many of them in their own small way for a small period of time also had significant contributions of course the nature of the government looked very different it was unstable it didn't last its full term but to think that uh, to buy that rhetoric from either side that this one is doing something bad only i think is being very very childish immature immature and the person who buys into those extreme views is unfortunately very uninformed yeah new clips released at the same time that a podcast releases this is trs clips make sure you subscribe